professor at the University of uh, California, Riverside. Although she's originally Chinese, so she took a, did her PhD in Shanghai, the Academy of Sciences in Shanghai, working actually on D and D. These are just not the same. Vampires, they are dressed as vampires. Um, and then she moved on to Great Britain to do a postdoc with Captain Martin at John Lewis Institute. Before moving back to, well, not back, moving the other way to the States, to go to Berkeley, to do a postdoc with Aaron Baker. Uh, with engines, did you do a postdoc with the engines? Yeah, engines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, she moved on to the University of Puerto Rico, so she set up, up her own group in 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. And since then, she has, uh, if you look at her CV, she has had a very impressive. Um, way through the smaller RNA, smaller RNAs of uh, infection, what we call things like that, smaller RNAs of infection. And today we're going to talk about a very recent uh, work on smaller RNAs of infection. Thank you so much, Michael. <laughs> it's such a great pleasure to have this opportunity to to present my work here, and uh, well, and you quite can think this uh, one of the all the conferences when we all first first started our own group, right? It was a, such a nice experience. And uh, uh, we both are very interested in the high silence in Parkway, and I'm so glad to see he's doing so well there. Um, so my lab is interested in the role of both small RNAs and the epigenetics needed regulation in plant microbial interaction. We use both bacteria and the fungal systems. So the bacteria we are using is the Pseudomonas ringi, which can infect Arabiasis as a model system in the lab. We also use this uh, uh, candidatus liberobacter, which can induce very severe um, citrus disease. Uh, probably is probably is the most devastating citrus disease right now. Uh, since the first infection um, trees got identified in 2005 in Florida, now more than 80% of the trees, citrus trees in Florida got infected, so they say it wiped out the whole citrus industry in Florida. In the United States, there are two major citrus production areas. One is Florida, which produces processed uh, citrus products like uh, juices, gems, all these things. And then in uh, the other one is in California. We produce most of the fresh fruits, the, the good looking fresh fruits. But two years ago, at exactly the same time, we found one positive tree. We, this is called citrus screening or following the first positive tree in, in California. So um, the, uh, the fungal pathogen I'm going to talk about is the botrytis scenario, which can infect in many, which can infect many different um, pathogen, uh, plants, including um, almost all the uh, fruits and vegetables. So small RNAs, I, I know here probably lots of people are familiar with. Small RNAs are short 20 to 30 or 40 nucleotides long regulatory small uh, RNAs that can induce gene silencing at different levels. They can uh, divide it, they can be divided into two subgroups uh, according to their precursor structure or biogenetic pathways. So microRNAs are derived from single-stranded RNA precursors. So those are single-stranded RNA precursors, but they can be folded into helping structure. So this uh, double-stranded region can be processed by a dicer or dicer-like protein to form this, uh, to, to generate these small RNAs. And then small interfering RNAs, we call the SIR RNAs, they are generated from long double-stranded RNA precursors. So they are double-stranded. They are formed by either uh, RDRs or overlapping uh, transcripts, and that they can also be processed by dicer proteins. So in, um, in uh, plants, for example, Aerodopsis, there are four dicer proteins. Once the small RNA got formed, they will be loaded into other proteins. So I want to, you to remember these two proteins. One is dicer to make the small RNA, one is argonaut to, to carry the small RNA to silence this target. So it's like an effect of a molecule in the small RNA silencing pathway. The small RNA needed to be loaded into argonaut protein 
to find their target to induce gene silencing. So those small RNAs can induce gene silencing either at the post-transcriptional level by induce transcriptional uh, 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 translational inhibition or mRNA degradation. Or they can induce gene silencing at the, the transcriptional level by, in, by guiding DNA methylation or physical modification. So upon host pathogen recognition, it doesn't matter if it's uh, um, fungal or mice or bacteria pathogens, um, they initiate a serious response, uh, signaling responses, which can end up uh, with either disease if the pathogen wins or resistance if the plant response, uh, plant resistance response win the battle. So it doesn't matter what kind of output, it's all mediated by gene expression reprogramming. And the, the studies from our lab and others have shown that small RNAs and the silencing pathways have to play a very important role in this process. So today I would uh, briefly talk about, so those small RNAs can generate from the plants, side by plants, or by pathogens. So if it's a plant, we call them uh, plant host endogenous small RNAs. If it's by the pathogens, we call the pathogen-derived small RNAs. And uh, I would uh, like to just give you a few examples of plant endogenous small RNAs uh, that play a very important role in plant defense. And I also gonna to mention like a couple of components, uh, one component in the small RNA machinery that uh, contribute to plant defense. So small RNA machinery is the uh, pathway that have uh, uh, processed the small RNA like the lipid proteins and uh, to load it to other proteins for the function. So those uh, lipid proteins, RNA proteins, RDR proteins, we call them uh, small RNA machinery components. So I will tell you like a little story about the RNA2 in paradoxes. And then I will mainly talk about the pathogen derived small RNA that's from phytoplasmids. So here I just want to show you some examples of a plant endogenous small RNAs that are specifically induced by bacteria or fungal pathogen infection. So here is a 20 tumor uh, net SI RNA that are specifically induced by ABRP2. So I can show you here. So this small RNA actually is generated from an overlap region of a pair of antisense transcripts. So basically, in the uh, eukaryotic genomes, uh, especially in animal systems, more than 20% of the protein coding genes, their transcripts are overlapping. And uh, this kind of arrangement is not because there's no rule in, in their genome. There are plenty of uh, intergenic regions, non-coding regions. But this such kind of arrangement is for the code regulation. And one of the code regulatory mechanism is called gene silencing. So this small RNA is generated from the overlap region of a natural antisense transcript pair. So under normal condition, this antisense transcript is uh, constituted express. But the, the, the sense transcript is only induced by stress, especially by bacterial <coughs> infection. So here you can see the bacterial infection with this specific uh, ABRRP2 infection is can induce to a very high level, which can reach a threshold so that this uh, double stranded, partial double stranded uh, structure can be recognized by uh, uh, the, the lysa protein. So, this is a, an intracellular pathogen? This bacteria? Uh, no, no. The bacteria is uh, uh, stay in the uh, echoplasm. They are basically the outside cells, so in between the <coughs> cells. So but somehow they signal this transcript to get Yeah, so basically, oh, I should uh, put it in um, the, the, the I, I think I have it in some other part. Basically, um, briefly, because I thought that <laughs> I should 
positive in here. So in, in, in some pathogen infection, especially bacteria, most of the bacteria, they stay in the apoplastic area, uh, like uh, here. So this is a plant cell, this is a plant cell, this is a plant cell, they stay in between the plant cells. And uh, they, they, they have this kind of conserved molecular patterns, for example, flagellate, which can be recognized by membrane associated recognition receptors. So it can initiate a serious resistance responses, for example, by tiny complete, and uh, to uh, uh, initiate defense, trigger defense responses. We call this kind of responses, uh, PAM trigger the responses. PAM stands for pathogen associated molecular pattern trigger the responses. And then over the co-evolution, uh, the pathogen doesn't like to be uh, defend. So they develop the uh, series of effective genes. So those effective genes encode effective proteins which can be delivered into the plant cell by a PAM3 secretion system in in the case of bacteria, but uh, in the case of uh, fungal or, or micro pathogens, they have other means to deliver their uh, effector proteins into the plant cell. Those effectors can suppress the PTI responses at various pathways to achieve more propagation. But plants, of course, doesn't like to be suppressed, so they also co-evolved another set of uh, responsive proteins we call the resistance protein which you can recognize those effectors and uh, trigger much more specific uh, and uh, robust resistance response. We call it the effective trigger the responses. So most of the pathogen effectors have been studied so far, they are proteins. So this is the introduction. And then um, for this one, is the small army. That's how we, we are studying, they are involved in the uh, uh, disease resistance pathway. So this uh, partially double-stranded region, they can be recognized by dicer protein and then processed into the small army because they are generated from the natural antifense transfer region, we call them natural SI RNA. So here you can see once the sense, uh, the, this sense transfer uh, is induced to a high level, this small army got process it got uh, induced and that can in turn suppress its uh, antifense targets. And our genetics analysis shows that this antifense target is a negative regulator of both plant defense in each time in an effective trigger the immunity. So the ADRP2 is an effector. So the second story uh, we found that a normal class of plant endogenous small RNA we call it uh, long SI RNA, they are not like 20 to 24 nucleotides long, the, the conventional length. They are slightly longer, they are 30 to 40 nucleotides long, so we found a, quite a few of them. Normally you don't see them because you do deep sequencing, at that time the deep sequencing, uh, you, you cut out like the 20 to 26 nucleotides long, you left out the 26, 28 to 30 something, because in that region you have a lot of TRNA RNA degradation products. So 80 to 90 percent of the leads are from TRNA RNA. To avoid those contamination, people normally make small RNA libraries lower than 26, 28. That's why you don't see those long ones. We only see those long ones when we do small RNA block because we always validate our deep sequencing results in small RNA block analysis. Then we found that actually a lot of the small RNAs, they can be longer like uh, this. And those small RNAs, they are differentially expressed. So here we use different bacterial treatments, or some, one of the cases is only induced in the, uh, the cell culture condition. So they are developmentally or uh, uh, environmentally condition uh, regulated. <coughs> so for this particular one, I use it as a case example. This small RNA is specifically induced by pseudomonas-3D bacteria that carry the effector protein called ABRP2. And then over the time course, the small RNA is highly induced and the, its target is downregulated. And the, this target, uh, so to, because this small RNA is longer, so we don't really know 
uh, if we, if the, the down regulation of the target is really caused by this long small army, because we don't really know if uh, this long small army is functional or not. So in order to nail down that, that question, we generated a report on transgenic line to hook up this uh, target gene with the YFP, or the target gene delete the, 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 uh, the small army target site with YFP. And then we did a small army uh, uh, and uh, uh, mRNA analysis. So in those transgenic lines, the small RNA goes up induced at, at the same level as the Y type upon passage infection. So that means that they can generate more RNA. But only the Y type the Y type UTR after bacterial infection, the small RNA generation, the, the YP target and report got the down regulated. If you deleted the target site, the down regulation got abolished. So this is a good uh, evidence to show that the down regulation of this uh, target protein gene is uh, due to the induction of the small RNA. Because if you delete the small RNA target site, you don't have the down regulation. So further analysis, uh, we found uh, this long small RNA induces gene silencing by decapping and by prime two three prime RNA degradation. So this is all are all published data, so I don't want to go into the detail. I just give you some flavor to show you that a lot of examples out there that uh, those small RNAs can be specifically induced by pathogen infection and the down regulated negative target of those events. So because under normal conditions, uh, for uh, to be cost effective, plants need to switch their defense responses pathway off. Then you need to have those negative regulators to turn down those defense responses. But upon pathogen infection, you need to turn the, the system on immediately. But if you turn them on by doing transcriptional regulation, it's too slow. So that's why you use this small RNA can immediately get rid of those active mRNAs in the cell, or at the same time to inhibit the translational uh, translational efficiency. Then the, the 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 negative regulators will be switched off more efficiently and quickly. So I think that this is a relatively easy, a uh, uh, reasonable way to or efficient way to get rid of those negative regulators. And then. Uh, I also want to show you one examples of the plant host small RNA machinery components that regulate host immunity. Because there are so many small RNAs that are regulating plant defense, you would expect to see some of the components in the small RNA biogenesis pathway probably play an important role there. So here we found that Arabopsin has 10 RNA. We examined their expression of passage infection on all of them. And uh, we found only one, Avanar 2, is highly induced by bacterial infection. And then other groups, like the Boston Food Group, they found that it's also highly induced by uh, uh, virus infection and some other passage infection. And then it's uh, induced at the uh, RNA level as well as the protein level. And then in order to show, uh, in order to test if uh, this gene is important for plant defense, we use the genetics approach to isolate the tDNA insertion knockout line, and we found that the knockout line is more susceptible to both virulence and avalanche strength. And uh, you can see, so this is a bacterial growth curve, and uh, normally the Y type of the growth is like uh, this is the log, so which means that uh, one means tenfold difference. So in these uh, uh, ETI responses, the change is uh, quite a lot. And uh, uh, the out of the 10 argonauts, um, argo 2, argo 7, argo 3, they are, they are uh, in the same uh, place. So we also generated a double and triple mutant. And we found argo 2 and argo 7 have an active effect, but the argo 3 has no effect. So then uh, that this result indicates that the ARGO2 play a very important role in plant defense because if you get rid of this protein, the bacteria can grow happily, grow a lot more in the plants. But the ARGO2 protein is the ARGO2 protein, which is the effective protein in the small RNA processing pathway. So we think 
this protein, we hypothesize that the ARGO2 function is associated with the associated small RNA. So we get the ARGO2 pull down to see what kind of small RNA is associated with it. And what we found is actually one of the microRNA stars is highly enriched. <coughs> so microRNA 393B is the, the most abundant small RNA in the smoker, in the ARGO2 uh, associated infection. And that this small RNA got to, to be loaded into Amazon 2 protein, which is suppressed a SNR complex gene called NAMP12, which promotes uh, 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 the, the antimicrobial peptide protein secretion. And that this uh, antimicrobial peptide secretion will benefit, uh, will contribute to the factor trigger immunity. So as I told you, as you pointed out, those bacteria stay outside of the cell. So plants need to secrete a lot of those uh, antimicrobial peptides or proteins to achieve resistance. So these microRNA stars, uh, these microRNA stars actually can achieve uh, this function by suppressing uh, uh, a smear, ritual grade trafficking smear complex protein. So you understand well, I mean, if, if you don't have bacterial infection, ARGO2 is not overexpressed. Mm -hmm. So MIR393B basically appears. Yeah, you don't really see it. That's so why it's star. Exactly. So normally, under normal condition, uh, you don't really see my RNA393. So, uh, so, mm -hmm. so what is the my RNA star? My RNA star, uh, traditionally people think it's a, a useless by uh, So basically, the small RNA, my RNA, uh, and my family size is the duplex, was cut out by Geiger from the stem loop precursor. And the one strain got stabilized in the Argonaut, the other strain will get degraded. And uh, that will cause my heart star. And then uh, people think that it's useless. But this study, we provided the first case to show that one microRNA precursor, they can generate two functional small RNAs. One is microRNA 393, which is loaded into Argonaut 1 as usual. And the one is the microRNA 393 star, which is supposed to be a, a, a useless byproduct, which got to be loaded into another Argonaut, and the both are functional. And the, this was shown by um, Jonathan Jones and Olivier Rodin's lab. They found that this microRNA 393 star, which you can suppress the oxygen receptor, which you can switch off or, or tone down the plant growth pathway, so shifts the energy to plant defense to contribute to PCI, PTI, uh, the pathogen, uh, the PAM triggered immunity indirectly. So, so to turn off by turning off the um, oxygen signaling pathway, the plant growth pathway. So contribute to laser defense. So our study to show that this uh, microRNA star actually was loaded in another argonaut and uh, promote uh, uh, antimicrobial peptide secretion and uh, contribute directly to the uh, stronger, more robust ETI responses. And then um, in animal system now, people found that in a lot of cancer cells, uh, or like a drosophila certain cell lines, they found under certain stress conditions, a lot of microRNA stars got uh, uh, enriched or, uh, or uh, induced. And uh, those microRNA stars can also be loaded in another arm. Well, probably saved rather than induced. Yeah, oh, exactly, but protected. protected. Yeah, otherwise they got degraded, yeah. but if they got it to be loaded in another arm, they, they got to and they also have persistent targets, and the <coughs> targets are also functional. So, but the, they didn't do this in, in depth analysis because they are in the, in the cell line. But they think those microRNA stars probably involved in stress responses or, 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 or cancer uh, processes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it known in our terms, for example, how many of the RNA stars? Uh, Targets, yeah. So uh, after like uh, the, the traditional microRNAs, um, people look at only like uh, 20 or 30 of them. But now because of the deep sequencing, they actually found under different conditions a lot of microRNA stars they accumulated to a, a, a different level. So previously they, they call it microRNA and microRNA star because they have like 1,000 times difference. So now uh, for a lot of new microRNAs, they don't call them. MicroRNA, microRNA star anymore because the lead 
uh, uh, relevant, uh, similar. So they call it Phi P, as well as they, the, the small one is from the, uh, closer to the Phi prime end, and the other one is 3 P, closer mm -hmm. to 3 prime end. L lots of work, Phi P, 3 P, thing. So we have uh, one recent study, some of the first person is uh, on a 3 P, kind of another microRNA stack, but it's no longer called microRNA stack, it's called a 3 P, to be functionally thanks to. So then I want to switch the gear. I'm going to talk about the passive derived small RNA. So mostly people are looking at the uh, uh, small RNAs from the host side. But I was thinking, oh, for those eukaryotic pathogens like fungus and all mice, a lot of them have, not everybody has, only uh, like a majority of them, majority of them have the small RNA tumor. They have Cytoproteins or other proteins, so they are likely to produce their own small RNA insects. So I was thinking, oh, that would be cool to look at the small RNA pool from pathogens and from the host at the same time. So that's my original idea. The reason I'm choosing botrytis is because botrytis is a super aggressive fungal pathogen, which can cause the, all these uh, uh, serious problems uh, on almost all the vegetables and the fruits, not only in the field but also uh, after, uh, after harvesting. So you can see them every day in your life. If you leave your fruits, strawberries, and tomatoes on, the, on, on your table for one day outside the fridge, you will see them. They, they come, they are everywhere in, in the air, the spores. So they infect everything, including flowers, including all these vegetables. There's more than 200 different plant species got infected. And uh, most importantly, they are uh, they, they have their own small RNA tumor. So we did a small RNA profiling on um, botrytis infected model system, aerodopsis, as well as the tomato on the leaves, as well as on the toma uh, tomato fruits over the time course. And then we use those uh, plate culture the botrytis as a control just to see if well, after infection any small RNA got induced or not. So we did that. Uh, then after the deep sequencing, we found actually more than 800 small RNAs that are derived from botrytis. They are enriched in both arabidopsis and the tomato. And out of those, we used the very stringent target protection. Uh, don't allow any mismatch in the seed region. So uh, microRNA or, or small RNA find the, uh, the, uh, the target of their uh, target genes, they use the uh, uh, sequence complementary role. But uh, normally in the seed region, you need to have a pretty good match to be able to uh, have a good uh, uh, silent efficiency. So, but normally you can still allow some mismatches here. But for this, because it's a, a new concept, we want to be more stringent, so we do not allow any seed region mismatch or, or, or bulge or gap, and uh, we use the cutoff at 4.5. Even use that kind of stringent, uh, so those criteria is more stringent than many of the plant known microRNA targets. So we want to make sure that the targets we predicted are, are, are likely to be true targets. And then we found that uh, more than 70 of those who try to derive the small RNAs, they can have potential targets in aerodopsis as well as tomato in both. So here I give you three examples. These are the three small RNAs we, we did the follow-up in that analysis. So one can target a map one and two in aerodopsis and a map PKT4 in, in tomato. And the other one can target the ROS, the, the oxidative burst which is the uh, defense responses, <coughs> uh, so the, the genes involved in ROS, and then uh, also some, some genes involved in defense, like a cell wall associated with a, a protein kinase. So we think that this, uh, after GO analysis, those uh, potential targets are concentrated in those gene groups that are related to defense. It's not like evenly distributed. So that's why it makes us feel more confident that those small RNAs are likely to be re relate, uh, regulating um, um, its uh, pathogenicity. How are they injected into the cell? Yeah, that's a good question. We don't really know yet. 
and uh, uh, nobody knows even for these uh, protein effects. So although people have been studying the fungal protein, fungal protein uh, effects for 10, 20 years, fungal and almighty protein, but uh, how they actually got delivered into the host, nobody knows except uh, uh, Brad Tyler's cell paper about the PI3T, the, 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 the lipid, membrane lipid, you know, uh, uh, the um, trafficking of the factor. Although there are lots of contradictory uh, debates out there, but I actually really believe it. Because because recently in the plasmodium, the, the um, uh, malaria, yeah, malaria, they found the one um, protein which is can be delivered to the blood cell, that protein contains this RSL R-like. So it's, co it's called a, a host, host penetration protein or host delivery yes. protein? It's one protein, yeah. Actually, this, uh, this domain is R-like. Uh, it's uh, very similar to the almighty effect protein. So that's why uh, we, we believe this uh, PI3T story is true. So um, I think Brad Tyler, they, they are still actually really actively uh, try to uh, make more uh, experiments mm -hmm. to, to prove that. But I, I believe from this other system, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, for the small army, nobody knows. But I, believe, uh, I, I guess the, the exocytosis, the endocytosis, the vertical thing works work very well, uh, 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 we are testing. And uh, some people think that there might be a transporter, but we don't really know if it's true. Because if it's transporter, you need uh, to have, uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, you have to accommodate the uh, RNA. So uh, the best study is um, uh, RNA from the uh, environment or the kingdom is C. elegans. So C. elegans is uh, the best uh, group who, who was working on this is a quite complex lab. And they have worked been using the genetic screening, identifying a lot of more proteins in that pathway. They found quite a few um, transporters. Five, like six, six. Yeah, six, six, five, six, one, six, two. But only they are all the C elegans specific. One specific. No only one, only single one have very, very limited homology to one of the human. One seems to have an extra, extra. The rest of the origin. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so everything is special about this. Yeah, this, this is uh, very, very, very interesting. So I talked with the press hunter uh, in the Tanyali, and then he said, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, in, in 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 humans or in other uh, organisms, the the small army but it will be very different. Yeah. In plants, uh, the cross kingdom army I like is kind of has not never been reported. But uh, within the organism, like David Borkham and uh, Olivia Monet, they published two science papers back to back uh, several years ago. And uh, Olivia's group used bombardment. The double, they, they proved that the double strand short duplex is the form to move from cell to cell by, by labeling, but uh, within short distance. And then David Borkham's lab, they use grafting. Uh, use uh, like uh, the the sign and the uh, uh, the the uh, stuff, yeah. They they did the discrafting and uh, they found the small army from the, the move from the sign to the root stock, but the only the transformer single stranded. But the other way they said that it's not very clear. But if you look at the paper, even this way, they, those are endogenous. Olivia was looking at this uh, bombardment right. the extra uh, cellular one. So the, 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 the lead is very low. But there should be some. But then after the paper is out, I was uh, talking to both of them. And I asked David, he said, oh, the majority should be 24. But I guess 21, 22, 23 should also move. <laughs> that uh, if it's a single strand or double strand, that it's long version or short version, it's not very clear. Because you can see elements. They found it's a longer version, or at least a double strand of the short version, not a single strand of short version. But they said they found that it's a 24 more single strand of short version. But the last meeting I met one of these new postgraduate uh, students who 
people over this project. Now she thinks the problem is not people's gender anymore. So, but we don't know yet. So like, but this is only within time. We are now talking about the cross kingdom. <laughs> so it's a man has now tried to uh, address that by looking at those uh, um, uh, trafficking proteins, the endosome, the exosome, the mutant. Uh, so it's the fungus can exercise those its microbes, then the plant can take care of it, yeah. it has a mechanism to yeah, plant, that, that, plant that, that, That's what I guess, yeah. but I needed to test yeah. it. Okay. So we, we don't know yet. Mm. <laughs> so those small RNAs, you can see they are enriched after infection. So these are the infected libraries, these are the cultured libraries. And then we confirmed it by small RNA, RT-PCR and more. And you can see those small RNAs are enriched at the early time points of the infection, like 18 hours post inoculation. And you can see for tracers actually grow over time. At 72 hours, they grow more. But the small <coughs> RNAs accumulate at the early stage. So as in uh, tomato. So this is uh, a this is tomato. And the, the, this is small RNAs are the same. We are talking about 3.1, 3.2. What size are these? Oh, these are all 21, 20, 20 and then this is uh, the first that we want to know if we really can do something on the plant genes. First, to check the gene expression, and then we found all oh, those predicted type genes indeed are not regulated after infection. So this is some course, and the those small are not regulated. But we want to make sure because protectors is such an aggressive group, pathogen, they uh, often kill the plant down. So we want to make sure the non regulation is not uh, caused by the cell death. So we did uh, this marker gene analysis. They are highly induced still to a very high level. And the beta tubulin is also expressed. So that means that the non-regulation is not caused by the cell death. But people also can say, oh, a lot of genes can be non-regulated after infection. That is to be regulated by the small arms. So we have to prove that by using the Bentham-Yana expression system to express the target by itself, or the target with the botrytis small arms, and you can see the targets are not bound So that means that the target can be targeted by the small arm. And then if we inoculate the target so together with the uh, unrelated plants endogenous <coughs> microRNA, the microRNA has no effect. And if we mutated the target site uh, by introducing these uh, silent mutations, uh, nucleotide uh, mutations, then we abolish the but in our small RNA field or disease resistance field, people are always pretty critical. So we always needed to use multiple ways to prove one thing. So that's why we generated a, a report sensor line that expressed the YP together with the BC siRNA uh, target site and or carry a mutated target site. And we found only the Y type target site after the tracer's infection, the small RNA can now regulate the white gene. But if it's mutated target site, it can no longer down regulate the target. So that means uh, those targets are two uh, for tracer small RNA targets. Then we want to know if this small RNA in the plant can really do something for its uh, pathogenesis. Because if those small RNA can really down regulate the target, then if you express those small RNA, in the plants, you would expect that the botrytis can infect those plants better because the, the, the small RNA can silence their genes, right? So that's uh, what we generated. This is transgenic uh, arabidopsis plants carrying botrytis small RNA, and uh, those plants are more susceptible to botrytis infection. So that's pretty uh, clear. And then the, uh, the, the, the target genes are consistently down regulated in those transgenic plants. And then those target genes, although we know microkinases are involved in plant sense, but there are uh, many uh, plant uh, microkinases that we can also this is microkinases. Oh, 28? Oh, I lost count. 28 microkinases, 10 microkinases, mm -hmm. and uh, 60 something microkinases. Yeah, I can't remember. It uh, uh, used to be very clear. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I, I couldn't remember. I think it's. Uh, if it's not 10, it's 28 of the metacase. 
So uh, MAPQ3, 4, 6 has been uh, proven to be involved in many cellular processes in cruise design. And the 1 and 2 has been shown to be important for about stress, but nobody detected in about stress. So we uh, uh, got the double mutant from a branch group, Maria, and they study about stress, they generate double strength, a uh, double knockout. And the data will be very helpful because uh, our small RNA can target both, and they are functional redundant. So we checked the double mutant, we found this small susceptible to stress, which indicates that map K1 and K2 are involved in natural defense against protective defection. And then the cell wall associated with kinase, we got the TDN insertion line, and it's also <coughs> slightly more, uh, more susceptible, but not as strong as that one. So they have a different degrees of involvement in defense. As I told you, the small RNA can, can have its genes in our adopters as well as in tomato. So we want to see if all those genes got targeted in tomato also involved in defense against botrytis. So we tried this uh, MAPPIC4, which is also targeted by the 3.2. And uh, this uh, MAPPIC4 is also downregulated <coughs> after uh, tomato got infected by botrytis over the time course. And uh, when we use the virus in this gene silencing in tomato, to knock down this gene, the plants become more susceptible to botrytis. So which means uh, indeed that those predicted targets that the, uh, by, by this small R, uh, by this botrytis small army are important for natural plant defense against this small army. Then the next question is how a pathogen small army be functional in plants. So after, um, after this uh, uh, about, uh, computational analysis, we found uh, all these uh, uh, 70 sampling small RNAs that can have a target in Arabic uh, tomato. They have uh, one common feature. First, they are 20 to 22 nucleotides long, and then the first nucleotide is U. And then this kind of feature is uh, the uh, uh, is uh, favored to be loaded into Arabic RNA1. So Jim Carrington and Eugene Chislet, they published the paper, uh, two papers back to back in Excel to, tell, uh, to, to, to show that different small RNAs with different first nucleotides can be sorted into different Arabic RNA. And the, this length with this first nucleotide U is likely, is most likely to be sorted into Arabic RNA1. So uh, uh, another group uh, in my lab are extensively working on RNA proteins in our analysis. So we have a lot of uh, antibodies and lines available, and uh, it's very easy to do the analysis. So we hypothesize that those potential small RNAs probably hijack host RNA protein to achieve silencing of the host attack. So basically, they load it into the host RNA to do the silencing in the plant because of that, that this is the in the plant system. So in order to test our uh, hypothesis, we did the Arnold IP, Arnold IP and the small RNA analysis. And here is the, uh, the result. After our one IP, we found that those small RNAs are present in the botrytis infected fraction. And this control fraction actually we use uh, untreated uh, plants mixed with the culture botrytis. And we couldn't see these small RNAs. <coughs> But uh, as a better um, control, actually, is uh, those argo 2 and argo 4 codons. <coughs> and argo 2, argo 4 codons, we cannot see the small RNA. So that means the small RNA have these specific features are specifically loaded into Arabidopsis RNA 1 for its function. So if they depend on uh, Arabidopsis RNA 1, then we would expect to see in Arabidopsis RNA 1 mutant background the small RNA can be no longer loaded into the host RNA, and they won't be functional. So we would expect to see the plant will be more resistant or less susceptible to protective infection. But at the beginning, I don't think so can be true because most of the time, RNA one mutant has a pleiotropic phenotyping because most of the plant microRNAs need to be loaded into RNA one. So most of the plant microRNAs is dependent on vessel one and then load into other one. And then they both have pleiotropic phenotype. 
and the most of the time they are all more susceptible to pathogen infection. We we never seen a more resistant phenotype. So I think uh, they, this is a long shot, but my postdoc went to test it anyway. And then he was very confident, he came to see me, he said, oh, I did it two to three times, it's all more resistant. So I feel like, oh, that's good, but we needed to really prove that. And then I asked uh, the other uh, graduate students involved in this project to do this again two times. And then we are very confident, it's very clear, it's more, less susceptible, more resistant. Then in order to make sure that this uh, phenotype is not caused by this uh, uh, pleiotropic phenotype, we use the DICE-1 mutant, which is involved in the same class. We have similar phenotype, and then uh, we found the it's actually more susceptible. Uh, actually more susceptible if that's more resistant. So that's actually very really good, because uh, DICE-1 we know is not required by, by the, uh, for, for the botrytismal RNA formation, because botrytismal RNA is made in botrytis. And the DICE-1 is a plant DICE that process plants more RNA. So this has nothing to do with botrytis. So this uh, mutant is more susceptible, suggests that plant small RNA machinery, the small RNA pathway might play a positive role in um, defending um, botrytis uh, during the interaction. But Botrytis also used one of the components in the pathway for its own benefit. So in this pathway, in this component, mutant background become less susceptible. So that makes a lot of sense. And then the, in the other one mutant background, those predicted targets actually used a lot of D reflex because normally after infecting those D is dominated in the blue bar. But uh, in the other one mutant background, they D repress. So then, all these uh, uh, data show that actually, when the tritus infects plants, it can be recognized by the plant cell and initiate the defense responses. So that the organoids is involved, the uh, bacteria is involved. But at the same time, it can deliver small RNA into the host cell, load it into organoid one, and degrade the, the target, and then suppress the immune responses and allow the botrytis to penetrate more and grow and eventually kill the cell. So this is a kind of cross kingdom and RNAi. As I told you, most of the effect molecules identified so far from pathogen are proteins. So we here added the small RNA to the list of the effectors from pathogens, which can be delivered into the host cell and to suppress <coughs> the host immunity. So the, the strongest evidence is, is to show that those small RNA actually got into the host uh, organoid complex after pull down, and that they are uh, functional by uh, using the organoid one to do the science. So then another uh, strong evidence to show this uh, small RNA to be uh, important for its pathogenicity, ideally is to knock out this this small army in botrytis to see if those botrytis were be less virulent anymore. But then at that time, uh, the, the botrytis genome was not uh, well annotated. After our uh, own uh, DNA analysis, we found actually those small RNA <coughs> are mainly generated from the uh, LTR, which transcription region. So there are multiple pockets. It's impossible for us to knock them down by deletion region. So one of them was a, yeah, 15 copies. <laughs> so then actually we found this kind of arrangement is very similar to those protein factor genes. Those protein factor genes are also are enriched in those uh, uh, transposome uh, rich regions for, uh, for, for many pathogens, including fusarian, including um, Omycetes, like a pink essence, they found that although the transposome rich regions are depleted from the cross-healing genes, but a lot of effector protein genes are enriched here. Is it too due to this uh, fast turnover? So, because uh, uh, transposome rich regions, they can have a lot of uh, recombination and uh, mutation, and uh, uh, in that case, you can generate new effector pro uh, protein genes or new effector genes which you can uh, better cope with the plant resistance. But plant 
actually if you look at those artings, you find that some artings are often also localized in those transposal region regions or even have transposons in their intrans promoter regions and they are clustered together. So this kind of genomic arrangement actually provided an uh, evolutionary advantage that uh, will contribute to this uh, rapid evolving uh, virulence and host adaptation. But this kind of arrangement makes it uh, it's impossible for us to delete this uh, small RNA uh, sequence in the, in the genome. Then we try to use another approach. We think all these small RNAs are likely to be generated from by, by the dicer proteins in the tracks. But in the there are only two dicers, so it's easy to lock them out. And we generated the single double mutant, single double mutant, and then we found that they have a partial redundancy. A small RNA is still present in the single mutant, but it disappeared in the double. And the, the, the growth is already affected in the single mutant. And I want to point that out, uh, point out that um, fungal small RNAs that are, they are not all dependent on the They can have a better independence, I believe. So if you from a uh, 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 Northwestern uh, medical, uh, university, uh, medical school, they use a, 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 a um, Unorospora Cresta as a model system identified at least four different parcels. One is dicer dependent. What is alpha dependent, I guess? Yeah, so what like is the like DIRNAs exactly, and exactly. the Exactly, exactly. The dicer uh, alpha not dependent, dicer independent, and alpha not dependent, alpha uh, not dicer oh. independent pathways. There's even an alpha dicer independent? Yeah, I think. Oh. So I actually uh, wrote a commentary on their paper. Their, their paper was uh, ended up with a molecular cell a couple of years ago, so I, I wrote a commentary in the same issue. To, to talk about this. So then we indeed found some small RNAs, uh, like RNA like RNAs are dicer independent. They are still present in the dice. So that means that the dice the impact on the overall biology of these fungus are less than the ones in the plants. You mean in the plants there are no dicer independent pathways? There must be. No, we don't know. We haven't found so far yet. Looks okay. like all the I would bet that there would be we haven't yeah. found them yet. Yeah, we don't find them yet, although so many people have been regularly looking for them. But we haven't found them yet. And then those mutants, the double mutants that without the small army, the, the with the host target, they, the, the strain is very, uh, almost abolished, it's uh, virulence. So even in tomato, which is uh, the best, one of the best hosts, the dicer double mutant strain can uh, largely delay the infection. So that means uh, those uh, dicer dependent small RNAs that dependent uh, that they have a target in both tomato and the and the uh, Arabidopsis are really important for its virulence, for its pathogenicity. If we knock them out, the strain, uh, the, the, the the virulence of the strain is largely attenuated. So in the end, uh, we show here the tractors actually can deliver small RNAs into the host cell to suppress host uh, immunity. So this is actually a naturally, a naturally occurring cross kingdom RNAi as an advanced virulence mechanism. And then uh, uh, from plants, the small RNA can be trans, 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 uh, translocated into insects or uh, fungus have been reported, but those are artificial systems. They generate transgenic plants, uh, express a helping structure to express small RNA that can target fungal, fungal genes. And those small RNAs can be found to be functional in the fungus. But those are transgenic artificial systems. So here is the, uh, a real naturally occurring system found the other way. And then there is one case the natural cross kingdom RNAi uh, was reported in cell research talking about human animal who consume the rice. They found the rice microRNA, a few microRNAs, 
uh, that gene so that we can suppress the tumor occurrence. And then she made it, asked the company to make this, those uh, rat medicine biscuits, found these transgenic lines, and see that there is mouse, and then found the animal studying the occurrence of the cancer. It used to be 80%, almost everybody, because of this uh, deficiency in the, in the, in the, in the, in the line significantly. I never seen such a beautiful uh, curve. She said she really believes it. But Monsanto really hates this kind of thing. So they heard about it. They came to her lab immediately. They said, can we uh, like a, sir, like a, uh, look at your notebook, uh, like a look at your experimental settings to see if everything is doing properly? But she said, I'm so, so I was supported. Uh, like my grandma found government. How, how come your, your, your company can can't have the authorization to examine my lab. Said, no way, go away. <laughs> and she was pretty mad, so she was talking about it at the meeting. And then she said she really believes it. Now, looks like those rats can have these, uh, the, the, those more can really go to the gut and have some effect. So this is the unpublished um, data, but I think she's uh, applying for the patent and it's, it's take a while. To, to get it, uh, to, to, to see the, the, the graph, but uh, she reported it at the end of her major talk, uh, added uh, like three, four uh, slides to show that. So I think this kind of thing is uh, happening. And also, the, oh, uh, uh, actually, have a little bit more. So is this cross kingdom army are virulent mechanism <coughs> also present in other pathogens? So we did a uh, uh, literature search, we found the Vitisserium, another uh, phylum limited fungal pathogen, uh, the Babach Thomas lab from Netherlands. They tested uh, all the, uh, not all, more, many of the small RNA pathway mutants. They found the majority of them are more susceptible to fungal infection, except Argonaut 1. So they found Argonaut 1 is more resistant. And this pathogen is not, so then that, that's uh, very similar to our s story because we found that beta one is slightly more susceptible, but the other one is more resistant. So that that uh, indicates that the other one might be used by pathogen for uh, pathogenicity. So this, because of this study, we uh, try to see if that could also work in here. But this uh, pathogen is only infected foods, so uh, the, the amount is too small. So I was thinking, okay, let's do a root culture analysis, and then. Uh, it worked. We collect the over the time course. Although you can see Argo 1 mutant is a lot smaller than the white type. The white type is already on multiple leaves. So they are still very small leaves, but they are a lot greener after infection. The white type is already yellowish dying. So this is to show that their, their result is true. The Argo 1 is more resistant. So we collected those tissue and then uh, the root tissue and then do the uh, other one IT and then, then do see the, the deep sequence analysis to use the, the same method we did before. And then this is pretty fresh data. We found that at least 40 something <coughs> vaticillin derived uh, small RNA that have a aerodosis target use a tenfold enrichment as a couple. So this actually is a lot more than tenfold. This actually is a lot more than tenfold. You can see this is zero weeks. This is 700 weeks. This is like a 19,000 uh, 19, weeks, sorry. And 19,000 weeks, like 52 weeks. So it's a, a many fold enrichment in the infected uh, cell. And the most strikingly, those targets all make sense. They are either TLMBSLR types or like the, uh, the uh, working work DNA binding proteins. And the one protein, we don't really know the function. At least I didn't really know the function. I haven't got a chance to check it yet. It's uh, the uh, cysteine, uh, cysteine histidine rich C1 domain protein, family protein. This protein has been shown up, has uh, turned out in many small RNA targets predictably. So when I showed this uh, to Bart in this MSTMI meeting, he was uh, really in, impressed by the results we, we are planning to collaborate together. And then he actually told me one story. He said after the uh, HIC uh, technology um, uh, developed, the co 
also induce the gene silencing to express the RNA eye construct in the host, which is silencing the fungus. Uh, the small bee student wants to do the pick in 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 Arabidopsis to fight against the, the vegetarian. He said, Oh, that will work because the vegetarian is a diamond vegetarian. It will work not work. But he said, I was so skeptical about it that the, 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 the data is so convincing that the deep the hips really work. The suppress so clear. That, that's why I said, now I, I believe everything. <laughs> so this is like a most current uh, development uh, in, in, in this little field. Okay. Thank you. In the end, I would like to thank the people in my lab. Actually, the 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 the, the trafficking small army work, the food traffic small army work, is mainly uh, uh, done by Arnold, a uh, German postdoc in my lab, um, and a talented uh, graduate student. So they both work very hard, um, work synergistically together, three and a half years of work, two of them. They did a certain job, and then now Arnie is actually uh, looking for a position because the her girlfriend is a Greek, <laughs> and she doesn't want to go to the city. So he was in my lab for three and a half years, separately from her girlfriend. So as soon as our paper published, she came back. She said, I, I just did be with my girlfriend at the same time we're looking for a position. So if well, there's any position open, especially in Greek, <laughs> and please tell, tell him, and then he, he will be very happy to do so. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, my, my other grad student, he is going to graduate very soon. So my work is supported by NSF and NIH from the federal government. Thank you very much. So basically it competes with other one uh, for, without, for, for production of other endogenous, let's say, uh, and micro yeah. or So actually the amount of those uh, pathogen small RNAs getting into the cell is so low that it won't compete. Ah, so you, have you checked other uh, my endogenous micro that are Yeah, they don't get affected very much. Because even, uh, like uh, for example, a lot of micro RNAs in the plant are already pretty abandoned, right? A lot of people all express plant endogenous microRNA to a very high level. They only see the microRNA over expression phenotype instead of looking at the compensate uh, other small RNA phenotype. So the capacity of small RNA loading looks like very high. Even you over express the microRNA to a very high level, you don't see the uh, the, the security effect of other microRNA. Okay, so, so this one, uh, the natural situation, in fact, the size is limited. And then the small RNA numbers are limited, so I don't think that it will interfere with the, the cellular thing too much. Did you look uh, in the botrytis genome to see if these microRNAs have targets also in, yeah, in itself? Exactly. So those microRNAs, uh, those small RNAs, I think their primary role in the genome, in the botrytis, in the botrytis genome, botrytis. is to silence transport. So so it, it silence transposal. So basically they have four small RNAs generated from the LTRs to silence the LTRs. And they're co-opted for the infection. Yeah. Then some of them happen to target important genes in, in the host, then they got enriched. That that's uh, that's uh, my 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 evolutionary hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you culture the trends? Yeah, you can culture the trends. On your bed as well. My friends are all the same, you know, that's the whole world. That's what we need in that control to see if we we'll buy itself or our town. Uh, you mentioned that you did some target prediction. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if they, I, I, I hope I didn't miss it, if you mentioned the, what software you used, the, how you could perform uh, the prediction. So, so uh, I don't think it's a, so there are two papers. One is uh, Jim Karen from 2006 paper. They uh, uh, made, I think it's 2006, they made uh, the, uh, the, the, the major rules 
for for plant target prediction. Then uh, in 2011, paper is a biometric paper. They finalized that. Then you can use your threshold. You can set it your threshold yourself. For example, even for the plant target prediction with plant slides, we can actually use loser um, uh, uh, criteria. But for these pathogens, we want to be sure we use a more stringent uh, criteria. So you can play around that that a little bit. But Dr. Peter Blue and Jim Kenneth's paper, original paper, and based on that, the 2011 biomedical paper, they talk about that. So the biomedical paper, I couldn't remember exactly, but then you can search David Wilkins' paper and my paper. We all cited that that paper. <laughs> There is some changes in here. I mean, the, when bacteria attack plants, so the, the plants will respond with a lot of intranspheres or special microRNA that we might be targeting bacteria. I mean, how how this is? I mean, how the signalization pathway takes place? I mean, how, the, how this special volatile intranspheres transcription of microRNA are? Um, how this, this pathway is activated? Is, is there like an overlapping between the PTI pathway or? Uh, uh, so the activation is uh, like a different small RNA, so they have different uh, regulation. For example, like a micro RNA, uh, 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 like a, the small RNA in general, they can be regulated at the different levels, at the transcriptional level by produce more, or by uh, degrade less, because the small RNA is normally going to be stabilized in the organelle protein. So you can have a trigger to make them getting into Argonaut a lot more. For example, the 393 star, we didn't see too much induction in the overall level. But with after pull down, we see a lot of induction. That's in our paper because of time, I didn't put it in here. But you can see a lot of induction. So you can see here, the microRNA star in general, you don't see very much after pull down a lot. So, so, so this is uh, a uh, step that you can also regulate. Yeah. I hope the plants that the plants that said that there is, there is bacteria that attack and then there is different things more often. Yeah, so, 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 so those, exactly. Yeah, so um, the, the, the loading itself, like a one strain in there, one strain in, in two different organs, this has not been proven. At the beginning, I, I don't feel I'm a biochemist, so I was waiting for everybody else to do it. But so far, I didn't see any lab doing it, so we did it. And then we found, that, so our paper is uh, under revision right now, we found that the secondary structure is uh, also important for determining the loading into different organelles. Um, the secondary structure of the, of the duplex. duplex. Of, of, of the duplex. duplex. The duplex has yeah, it's not it's it's yeah but uh, they have all bodies. They have a mismatch uh, in, in that. So we found that, that, yeah. So what uh, we found is that the double strand, uh, if was, you, you have a middle mismatch, like 10, 11 tall, you, you go to other one. And then you have a uh, 11 mismatch. If you have a no mismatch stretch, you go to other two. And then the 15 position is also important. If you have a mismatch in the 15 position, you don't go anywhere. It's like a both got to re reduce. So this is a, like a like micromanage type of uh, experiment. I, I'm glad that one of my postdocs, he did a, like a, uh, have a mismatch from first position to 19th position. It's a lot, a lot of construct in different things. Then we finally uh, managed to compensate the other one mutant. So the other one, we use the other one dash 12 mutant, which has uh, this phenotype, translate phenotype, which largely caused by the fibrosis of expression. Uh, because uh, the small RNA of 165, RNA 165, but uh, this dysfunctional because of the ARGO one mutant, uh, the, the ARGO one mutated. So they show this, this phenotype. Because this particular this phenotype, this phenotype is largely due to one microRNA, so we think we can 
the reconstituted the, the re microRNA. The make the microRNA sequence is no change, but change is the complementary sequence to make the microRNA can be loaded into other two. Then we can compensate the phenotype, and we did it. We transform this artificial microRNA construct and then put it in the other one dash top of the cancer background, and then we got the we no longer disease normally, normal, although it's still small because the other one has all the other things, but this one is caused by this uh, 165 who made it. But then uh, the review has, although they all pretty happy with all these things, they said, you can test them more and more and more and more. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, we, we are thinking of, like uh, we have done, majority of their council try to send it back. But then, that's other than that, in addition to this, the other one protein itself is interacting with all the other proteins. Especially in animal systems, it's a large complex. It's interacting with different proteins for different processes. But in plants, in many labs are doing it. I know Olivia's lab are doing it, but quite a lot, but no publication so far. So our lab is just among them. We have identified several very good candidates so we are extensively working on that. But it's probably a, a, another year before we can publish it. Or, or how to use. <laughs> but yeah, so so those animals are, are highly regulated. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. It's a long time. <laughs> thank you.